Hello, and welcome to another Lord of the Rings limited set review. This time we're talking about black, um, all the black cards for draft specifically, um, how I think they're going to perform, how good they are, how bad they are, how unplayable they are, how interesting they are. I don't know, all kinds of interesting things. Talking about artwork sometimes, mispronounced names, lots of fun stuff happening. So um, without further ado, let's talk about how I rate cards and get rid of my face so that you can actually read the things that are on the screen. Um, so this is these are the five tiers I use to talk about cards. Um, if you've never seen one of these before, basically tier one cards are really good, tier five cards are really bad. If you want to read about the, the, the actual like meaning of the, what the tiers are supposed to mean that I definitely always am following all the time, consistently, surely all the time, um, you can read those. But if not, we're going to begin the review and bring me back. Hey, I'm back. Nope, I'm not back, actually. There I am. Um, Alright. So. Um, Alright, so the first card is Bitter Downfall. It is a three and a black for an instant. Uh, the spell costs do this to cast if it targets a creature that was dealt damage this turn, and you can destroy target creature, its control loses two life. So the alternative mode on this is like not actually good at all, but it will, I'm sure, come up at some point where you, like, I, I doubt I'm ever going to cast this for the alternate mode. I think I'm just going to cast it for four mana every time. It's really good at four mana, though, because, like, you're, like, four mana destroy something, control loses two life is, like, really something. That's something, that's something to be impressed about. And it's an instant, and that's great, and it's just really efficient. And that's my take on this card. I have it rated so high. I mean, there's so few cards in tier... Like, there has to be a tier 1 in the set, and so there's just... There's so few cards that actually, like, are... Like, jump off the page to be to be there that this is making a cut for me. The Black Breath. Two and a black for a sorcery. Creatures your opponent's control get minus one, minus one until end of turn. The ring tempts you. I don't think this card is going to be main deckable, really. Um, it's possible, that's why I left it in tier 4 instead of tier 5, that it is not a complete blank. Just because there are a decent number of 1-1 one, one tokens in the set, there are like a bunch of 2-mana two 2-1s. Two like, if your opponent plays a 2-mana two 2-1 two and then you play this on 3, like, you're... That's probably okay. Like, it's still not good, but it's probably, like, acceptable. And that happens in, like, a decent number of games, actually, I think, in this format, so... I think just kill your opponent's two drop sometimes is like a it's like a like a somewhat playable card. Like the ring tempting you not maybe the most insane here, but Yeah, I think it'll be playable. Call of the Ring. I wanted a black for a enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep the ring tempts you when you choose a creature as your ring bearer, you may pay two life if you do draw a card. Um I was really a lot higher on this card and then I was like, wait, it doesn't impact the board at all. But at first, I was like, oh my god, it's insane. It's just, it just accelerates your ring all the way to tier 4 in 4 turns, which is, I think, actually good. Like, I think that's actually good. Um, it allows you to choose a new ring bearer every upkeep, which also is very good and unique. Um, you can draw a card sometimes. Like, you want to pay 2 life? You, like, you should basically be automatically drawing 2 cards off of this if, you have, if you're actually having creatures to tempt with the ring. Which, again, is not a given necessarily. But I think if you play this on 2, like, you're going to be pretty happy about it. If you, I guess top decking is bad, but so is like top decking, like, I don't know, your 1-drop. Like, it, it's kind of like a weird argument to me. Um, I like it. I think it's solid. I think it does a decent amount of stuff. It does obviously not, again, the low board impact is tough, but I think that, like, you're just going to snap off paying for a life for two cards. Like, I think, I don't know, that's just, I think, easy money for me. I think that's just, like, I'm going to do that every time, I think. So. Sirith Ungol Patrol. Four and a black for a four five. Sacrifice another creature, draw a card, then create a food token. So, this card's really unfortunate in the um the sense that it's like a five drop to have like this effect is really strong like if this were like a three mana two two three like if this were the card from the last set it would just be like really good but because it's a, like you're paying five mana to have a creature that doesn't like it it doesn't really 
do like it it's not attacking or like it's its goal is not to attack or block its goal is to sacrifice your other creatures to draw cards i don't know it the, the effect is good like just inherently good it's cheap enough and like efficient enough but the body itself is so bad that and like so anti-synergistic with the effect that it just doesn't seem like a good card to me Claim the Precious. One black black for a sorcery. Destroy target creature. The ring tempts you. Um, this not being an instant is very bad. But it being a free ring tempts you outlet on a murder is really good. Uh, I like it a lot. So it's a good card. I, don't, I do not think I will ever get to draft it. Because it will be taken so much higher than I'm willing to take it. But I think it's a good card. Dunland Cribbin. Cribbane, I don't know. Two and a black for a 1 1 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, the mass works too. So the reverse of the preening champion. Uh, it's still worse than that, even if it were just the reverse of the preening champion. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously it's like two bodies for three mana. One of them's a flyer. One of them is like a 2 2 that blocks and like, can do other stuff. It, the mass is decent. I don't know. Like this, like it just is a really solid, like. Make some rectangles, all that good stuff. Card. Eastling Vanguard, one of the black for a two one when it dies a mass one. I'm uh this card, I'm I'm kind of surprised that I like it. Like when I see this card, I'm like, ah, oh, it's like kinda it's like I kinda like it. And then I'm like, wait a minute, it's bad. Like it has to be bad. It's a two mana two one that dies into a one one. I'm like, yeah, it's not like that bad. I feel like it's kinda bad. But I also kind of think that it's good. Like, I like my instinct is like, oh, this card's, like, kind of good. But then I look at it, and I'm like, it, like, when I think, I'm like, it's bad. But then I'm like, trust the instinct that it's good. I don't know. I think it's mediocre and, like, fine. And, like, you'll maybe play it. Golem, Patient Plotter. One in a black for a 3 one that leaves the battlefield, the ring tempts you. And you can sacrifice a creature and pay black to return it from the graveyard to your hand. And you activate only as a sorcery. It's kind of a nice little sack outlet, actually. There aren't that many, like, good, good ones. And this one's really solid. Like, you just block... Like, you just play this on two, block anything. Like, your opponent probably is going to have to block it at some point. And then you ring tempts you. Decent. Um, then you can get it back, and then the ring will tempt you again, maybe. I don't know. I like it. just like the card. A lot of, a lot of value. Just punched my mic, so that's... I apologize about that. Um... <laughs> And uh, that's it on Golem. Speaking of Golem, Golem's Bite. Uh, single black mana for an instant target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. You can pay three and a black and exile it from your graveyard. And the ring tempts you active, it only is a sorcery. Uh, I like this removal spell a lot. It's a removal spell that just gives you extra free value for like no reason. It's an instant, which is great. Um, there's really nothing like not to like about this card. You can use it as a trick sometimes. All kinds of good, there's all kinds of good uses for this card. And then if you really want the ring to tempt you, Go for it, you know. Hmm. Yeah. That's it. That's that's Golem's bite. Uh Gorbag of Minus Morgul. One and a black for a two two and a goblin or orc you control deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice it when you do draw a card or create a treasure token. Yeah, but, like, you don't... Like, it's just... This doesn't make it... This card doesn't do anything. It's just, it's like... It's just, like, yeah, I want to sacrifice my board presence for, like, a card, maybe. But, like, it's not even, like... A, it's, like... I think your opponent just says deal and just moves on with their life. For the, unless they're... Unless you're getting hit with a 1-1, one, one, but then how is your... I don't know. It's just... Whatever, man. Like, whatever. It's not... It's just ain't it. It ain't it, brother. It ain't it. Why are there so many G cards in black? Gothmog, Morgul Lieutenant. Three and a black for a 3 3 when it enters the battlefield, amass or orcs. One. Creature tokens you control have death touch. So this is actually really good, right? Like, it's really annoying. It makes, like, a 1 1 death touch when it enters the battlefield. Um, and also, like, all your spirits have death touch, and, like, all your other tokens. All kinds of tokens. Your treasure tokens have death touch. Or, no, it's actually not a creature token. I lied about the thing that I just said. I can't read. Um. Yeah, I mean, there's just tons of 4-mana 3-3s, three so it's not going to be, like, that out of place, and it also makes your stuff B. 
big and hard to block and annoying. So I really like it. Grimma Worm Tongue. Two and a black for a 1 4. Your opponents can't gain life. Sacrifice another creature. Target player loses one life. If the sacrifice creature was legendary, a mass works too. I think most of the creatures that you're going to be. Like, you can, like, make your armies legendary with the ring and then sacrifice your army and then make a new army. Like, that's kind of, like, the thing. That's the joke that I'm kind of seeing with this thing happening. Like, you a mass orcs one. You put the ring on the mass orcs. You sacrifice them. Get into mass orcs two. Put the ring on the mass orcs two. Sacrifice it. And you just have, like, infinite stuff. I don't actually know if that's good. Like, you're just draining your opponents, but they can't gain. Like, you can't gain life. I don't know. It seems decent to me. It is a 1-4. They block pretty well in this set. Grand the Gatebreaker. 3 and a black for a 5-5 five, five trample vehicle. Uh, as long as it's your turn and you control an army, it's an artifact creature. And it has crew 3. So. I mean, I don't know. It's like it doesn't block well. Um, but on attacks, it's decent if you have an army. It... I, I, um, don't know how this works. Like, I guess you can't do the thing where, like, once it attacks you, it's already, like, I, I don't actually know how this works. Like, if you were to have an army, and you were to go to attacks, and you were to attack with this, and then you were to kill, like, your opponent's army or something, like, your opponent kills your army, I don't think this becomes not a creature anymore because it's already attacked, but I don't know. That's kind of interesting. I don't know how those abilities stack. I would assume that it doesn't. It kind of seems like that would be really, really, like an absolute nightmare if it does. I know you could just, like, then you could just crew it again, and then it would still be, I don't, it, that's a strange little rules thing that I don't really know how it works. But I think once it attacks, you're probably good. Anyway, I think it's like, whatever, I'm not super interested in it. Maybe better than this, though. Haunt of the Dead Marshes. One black for a 1-1 one, one. when it enters the battlefield. Scry one. You can pay two and a black to return it from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. I'll activate only if you control a legendary creature, which you always will. Um, I don't know. I think it's, like, fine, but you don't really... The, the, the one thing that I think about black is that it doesn't really need sacrifice fodder, like, because it has the armies, and you kind of want to be sacrificing those. Like, I think those are really the sac fodder you actually want. Whereas this is kind of just like a one drop, which I think is going to be fine sometimes, but it just, you know, obviously has its downsides as well. Islander's Fateful Strike. Two black black for a legendary instant. You can only cast it if you control a legendary permanent, I think. I guess only creatures or planeswalkers for some reason, I don't know. Destroy target creature. If, this con if its controller has more than four cards in hand, egg the exile cards in the hand equal the difference. Not a ton of situations where they're actually going to be exiling cards. If you ever get a card exiled off of it, it's great. If not, whatever. It's still fine. You are going to have um, legendaries a decent amount, though. So. Latch the Balrog. Single black mana for a sorcery. You can pay four or sacrifice a creature to pay to cast the spell, and you can destroy target creature. Sorcery Sweep and Ruble, kind of bad. It's not good, usually. It's not very good. But, nothing. I don't know. I mean, armies, it's good with armies. Like, you want to sacrifice your armies to destroy stuff. So that's kind of it. Like, you want things that are good to sacrifice your armies with, because that's what you want to be doing with your armies. But, I mean, yeah. Abela Sackville Baggins. Two and a black for a 3-3 three, three Flash Menace. When it enters the battlefield, exile target creature card from an opponent's graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn and create X treasure tokens or X the exile card's power. So like sometimes this extra text like matters. I think most of the time it's just kind of a 2-mana, or 3-mana, 2-3 Flash Menace, which is fine. Like it's a solid, it's, but again, the, the rate on the cards in this set is low, so this is that's a much above rate. Plays well in your instant speed, instant speed decks. Like, I don't know. It seems decent enough to me. March from the Black Gate. One of the black for an enchantment when it enters the battlefield or whenever an army you control attacks, you amass orcs for one. 
So unfortunately, this you never are going to have a good attack with this, and as a result, this will never do anything. I don't know why that doesn't start as... I mean, the problem with this card is that they don't want to make it good, because if they made it good, it would just be completely unbearable to play against. And if they... And said, so instead they make it bad, and so then it just doesn't do anything. It's just a complete blank. Um, yeah. Like, it kind of reads better than it actually is, too. Like, okay, my army's gonna attack, and then I'm gonna get, like, it's gonna become bigger when it attacks. But then, like, actually, you were like, no, actually, wait a minute. But they could have all done something, I don't know, we're, we're getting, like, design decisions. Like, it could have been like, yeah, maybe they could scry one, too, you know? I don't know, you could scry one and a mass one. I don't know, something like that. Still don't even think it would be good at all, but... Mirkwood Bats. Three and a black for a two-three flyer. When you create or sacrifice a token, each opponent loses one life. So, I have been on a bit of a ride with this card. Because... So I look at the card and I'm like, alright, it's a 4 mana 2-3 flyer. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. It's going to deal damage to my opponent, most likely. How much damage does it need to deal to my opponent, on average, for it to be a good card? I sort of came to the conclusion that 3 damage was kind of the magic number, where I was like, if I've dealt 3 damage to my opponent with this, I feel great. Um, with the ability, specifically. If it is not consistently dealing 3 damage, it is not good. Um... I think there are enough ways to make tokens in this set that that is completely feasible. Um, and as a result, I think that it's going to be solid, but not great. It's not a, this is not Commander, where the card apparently is like take, is going to just completely like dominate. Apparently this is like a CDH card or something, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. People hate this card. Mordor Musta. One in a black for a sorcery, you draw a card and lose one life. You amass orcs one. So again, like with the amass orcs, the mass just generally you want your thing to be making as many like in, like tokens as possible. You don't really want to be putting plus one plus one counters on it. This card is best as kind of your two drop, as like a two mana one one draw card. Now you do lose one life too. Like this is there's so many things that make this like worse. Like a um like the dog from um Neon Dynasty was like this but better that was a tier I, that was almost a tier one card i think it was close at the beginning of the format it definitely was but i think towards the end of the format it kind of turned into like a tier two card and this is obviously like a step below that so it's sort of where i've rated it um yeah you ride mordor trebuchet Two and a black for a 1-4 defender. When you attack with one or more goblins or orcs, create a 2-1 colorless construct artifact named with, with the boulder that's flying, and it attacks, and then sacrifice it at the end of combat instead of at the end of your turn. Which for flavor purposes makes sense, but for like balance purposes is very annoying. Um, I don't know, there's people that like this card. I'm not one of them yet. It is a wall, so that's, you know, we do like walls here, but like not, you know. They actually haven't... Um, when was the last? I guess they printed walls in like uh, Dominar United. Defenders was a real deck in that uh, format. This is not in that format though. I think in that format this card would actually be kind of great. Obviously, the, the text changed a little bit, but I don't know. It certainly makes a two one that is flying, and like there isn't a ton of stuff again that like is gonna block like you're the two one flyer probably gets in like 75 percent of the time when you make it so like you play this on three attack with your two drop goblin like that's that's four that's that that's you know you're getting in two damage and then i don't know if you have uses at instant speed uses for the token this is actually like really good i think but i don't actually think there's that many good ones so I don't think it's like that easy to enable this, I guess, would be sort of my my view on it. Morgul Knife Wound. One in a black for an enchantment. Enchanted creature gets minus three, minus O, and has at the beginning of your upkeep exile this creature unless you pay two life. Yeah, this is just really bad removal. Like I'm never gonna play this, but some people will play it, I guess. I don't know. It's uh it's not for me, boss. I'm sorry to tell you. It's just not for me. I wish I don't really wish that it were at all. 
His his fingers are going deep into his skin though. You see that? Like he's got one of the like his ring finger. That thing is going. He's he's gouging his freaking uh, his pectoral there. He's he's going off in many ways. Yeah, I don't know. That that is like real. Like he's he's like that that is a grip. Like that that's the real. That's the thing about this card that you really should be paying attention to is how how like what's going on there. But uh, yeah, nasty end. When in a black for an instant, as additional cost to cast the spell Sacrifice Creature, draw two cards, and the Sacrifice Creature was legendary, draw three cards instead. So, your Village Rights type effect, generally not very good. Um, so, like, it, the, the two mana, it's worse. I don't think that the legendary creature upside is actually, like, that good at all. Um. It's not the card from AFR where, like, it made a treasure. That card was actually good because it made a treasure. This is not that at all in any way. That one also led you to sacrifice treasures as well. So this is much, much worse in every way. Um, and I'm not a big fan of it. It is, like, obviously you do want it more because you want to sacrifice your army and stuff. But I just don't. I don't know. Nazgul. Two and a black for a 1 2. Death Touch. When it enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. Whenever the ring tempts you, put a plus one, plus one counter on each wraith you control. So it's basically a 3 or 2 3 Death Touch for 3, which is fine. Um, I don't think that's anything like super special. Yes, it grows when the ring tempts you some more, which is nice, but. 3 mana, 2 3 Death Touch is probably better in this format that I'm giving it credit for, like right now. Um, because again, it's a smaller format, so like it's actually like probably a little overstated actually. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's solid. If you get like four of them, you are gonna like win because you just ca if you ever cast the second one, you just like win the game instantly on the spot because like you're two, three, four death toucher. Yeah, it's two, three, four death. Or, uh, it's a three, four and a two, three death toucher. No, it's a it's a four, five, and a three four to, anyways it doesn't really matter <laughs> if you ever play a second one of these while one of them is on the board you probably just win so be advised about that like we they get they're very very good if you get more of them oath of the gray host uh three and a black for a saga you and target opponent each create a food token each opponent loses three life you create a treasure token and then you create three tapped one on white spirit creature tokens with flying so, this is one of those cards that, like, I, it's completely impossible to evaluate. I have absolutely no idea how good this card is. And so I've put it in tier 3 because I'm a coward. I have, I'm not, I don't have a hot take, I don't, I can't, I originally was like, oh, it's going to be tiered, it's going to be so good. And then I was like, I don't, I, I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea how good this card's going to be. Um, it's so context dependent. It has the potential to do so many things and the reality of potentially doing nothing. But, like, I, it's just the, the spirits are so, like, the the, the value, the inherent value that, I mean, if you go, like, Merkwood Bats into this, like, you're probably just, like, going to kill them. I mean, but the thing is that they, they're going to just kill them. It's just so tempo, it's so tempo negative until you get the spirits. And then it's, like, okay on a tempo basis. You are putting life total pressure on your opponent. You do get the treasure back, so it's kind of like it's three mana. You get the treasure back on turn two, so you do get that extra. So it's like you do get the tempo kind of back. I'm going to pick this card higher than I'm rating it, I think. But I don't know. I, I, it's so difficult to evaluate this card. I really, I'm really just like copping out here. I, I don't. My, uh, it's, it's above my pay grade, that's for sure. To figure out whether this card is actually good or not. One ring to rule them all. Two black black for a saga. The ring tempts you. Then each player mills cards equal to the ring bearer's power, which is probably like two. Level two, destroy all non-legendary creatures, which is probably like no uh, none of your opponent's creatures that actually matter. And then, like this might actually just be an F. Like the more I read it, each opponent loses one life for each creature card in that player's graveyard. Like this might just be an F. Like this might just straight up just be an F. Like it's completely like this might be tier five, completely unplayable. Like I. 
Like, I, like you, you look at this and I'm like, oh, in a normal set, this just kills your opponent's stuff. They can't play anything. But in this set, they're like, okay, I'll just like play my legendary creature instead of playing my four drop, and then I'll win. Like it's just like you think, oh, all right, well, I had to play my three drop legendary instead of my four drop on on curve. Like that's not that bad. And like, yes, you get to keep all your stuff, but only like, I just don't think this is good. It does deal a decent amount. Like it deals like four damage probably. That's not good. That's just not good. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not gonna, never going to play this card, probably, actually. Like, the more I think about this card. Like, it looks so tempting. And then it's just... I think this is definitely worse than this card. Like, this card, I think, is much better than this card. And yet, I've rated them in the same tier, because I'm stupid. Because of the rarity symbols. Look, I'm, look, I'm not... I'm, I'm not above getting confused by rarity symbols, okay? I'm not above being tempted, alright? Orcish Bowmasters. This one's not confusing. This one's busted. One and a black for a 1-1 one, one flash. When it enters the battlefield, whenever an opponent draws a card, except for the first one they draw on each other, draw steps. Which actually is a very interesting card, a very interesting line of text. Orcish Bowmasters deals one damage to any target and a mass orcs one. So it does not say that whenever they draw their second card each turn. It says when they draw a card outside of their draw step, which means if they draw a card on your turn, which I almost guarantee will happen to somebody, somebody's not going to read this right, and that's going to happen. And good for you, because you just win the game when that happens. Uh, it's just like, it's so, if it, like, it just does, like, it's, so it's a, it's two mana for two 1-1s. One you one. also deal one damage to any target when it enters the battlefield. If your opponent decides, like, is in the process of drawing a card, this is then a two mana 1-1 one one and a 2-2 two two that pings for two damage to wherever you want. And the, it's so cheap, and it's at instant speed, and it just does all the stuff, and, like, you, this is one of, like, you just always play this on two, I think. I, still. Actually, maybe you don't. Maybe, like, if you literally have nothing else that's possible, you're supposed to wait on this. I don't know. It's interesting. If you play it on turn two, it's still not that bad, so. Orchid's medicine, medicine, I can't say words. Uh, one on a black for an instant. Target creature gains your choice of lifelink or indestructible until end of turn, and a mass works one. So yeah, the uh, the joke is that you're supposed to use it on your your army. Um, I don't know if they're like killing this guy or what they're doing to him. I, I can't really tell to be honest with you. It's uh somewhat difficult to figure that out, but yeah, I don't know. It's I don't know. This card is like there's just there's so many ways that this goes poorly for you and like the lifelink like yeah it's great to have the option sometimes you go lifelink and then your opponent's like all right in response i'm gonna like cast a combat trick on my dude and you're like oh i guess i just lose the game now and it's like yeah and then you do lose the game now yes so i don't know i'm not not interested in this card at all sam's desperate rescue single black mana for a sorcery or turn target creature card from your graveyard to your hand the ring tempts you um so the thing about this card is that it's very cheap, and it also tempts you with the ring. And also it gets, like, this, I just like this, this the cheap, the efficiency of this card is very nice. Um, there's just so many, like, ways that this goes well for you. There's just so many ways to use this that are, that you're happy with. Um, sometimes you, like, lethal your opponent with it, because you get to, like, one, one of the ring tiers that makes your thing, like, unblockable or whatever. Like, so the... There's so many like niche little things that this card can do that I'm I'm really happy. Like, I think I think it's just good. I think it's just a solid card. Sauron, the Necromancer, three black black for a four four menace. When it when it attacks, exile target creature card from your graveyard. Create a tap an attacking token that's a copy of that card. It's a three three black wraith with menace. I guess that technically works with like Nazgul or whatever. Um, at the beginning of your next end steps, exile that token unless Sauron is your ring bearer. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, like, it's not that hard to make him your ring bearer, and then, well, if he's your ring bearer, you just, like, get, like, even if he's not the ring bearer, it's not, like, completely an absolute nightmare. I don't think this thing's, like, busted by any means, because it's a 5-mana 4-4 four, four menace that doesn't do anything when it enters the battlefield. So I don't think it's, like, busted, but I do think it's good, because it does demand an answer most of the time. Um, like, it's not as good as, a like, Olivia in, um... Crimson Vow was, like, a very good card. That card was, like, a really, really good rare. This card is much worse than that card. However, it is cheaper. Um, 
And also, like, gives you the ability to have your thing stick around permanently, maybe. So, yeah, I don't know. It's fine. It's solid. Shadow of the enemy. Three black, black, black. For a sorcery, exile all card creature cards from target player's graveyard. You may cast spells from among those cards for as long as they are in exiled. And add mana of any type to be can't. To be spent to cast them. Uh, yeah, so this is just really bad. It's like a six mana draw spell that only draws stuff that's been played already, which is probably the worst stuff. And then, I don't know. Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing, uh nothing else right I don't really know I'm trying to figure out what this art is I'm trying to I'm trying I can't I can't figure it out anyway we continue she lobs ambush single black mana for an instant target creature gets plus one plus two and gains death touch until end of turn create a food token yeah this is a really really good combat trick like this is just insane so like, it, uh, basically, it's so efficient, and it, tra it makes your creature trade with anything. Like, so even if your opponent is like, well, I have a combat trick, ha, in response, I have a, a combat trick. Um, you can be like, it doesn't matter, like, it doesn't, like, it completely blocks that, uh, from, from you getting, like, blown out. It also makes a food token, which is, like, not irrelevant. It's pretty good, actually. And, like, especially in black, like, black actually probably wants the life more than most of the colors. And then, like, yeah, I mean, just make sure creature trade or, like, win combat against anything, or at least trade, which is really solid. And just, like, it's just so efficient and, like, instant. All, all this good stuff. There's a lot of good stuff going on here. I really like it. Snarling Warg. Three and a black for a 3-4 menace. As long as you control the Garblin or Orc, it gets plus one, plus oh. So it's going to be a 4-4 four, four menace in 70% of games, which is really strong, actually. Four mana, four four menace is no joke. Um, attacks very very well, so I think this is a, a decent card. We've seen like two like, you know what's you know what's funny about this card and like weird about it. We keep seeing these like four mana two four menaces. They just keep printing them, and then now they're like, okay, fine, we'll print a four mana three four menace that like also is always a four four. And I'm like, God, like what guys? Like what, we've are we are we here? Have we have we arrived at like a two four menace just isn't ever good? And like this is like actually has a chance to be decent. I think we might have arrived. I think we might be there. So, yeah. A Torment of Gollum. Um, three and a black for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card in it. That player discards that card. A Mass Orcs, too. Let me take lands. Let me take them. I'm mad. I want to... I'm... I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the the presses, you know. Like, come on, guys. Like, it's like if you haven't played enough lands to be functional by turn four. Like, what? Like, what are we doing? Like, I, like, can we just like can't we just let people have like fun? You know, like why why? You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't understand. I, mean, I I'll never like I would never print this card and make it not say any card in the hand for four mana. Like, it's just it's an absolute travesty to be honest with you. Like, it's just I'm not, like such a mindset. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, like, uh, there's, the thing about this card is that, the thing that I don't like about this card is that by turn four, if your opponent hasn't played, like, the opponent's gonna have played their best cards, like, by turn, it's turn four, guys, like, this isn't, like, turn three, where it's like, oh, there's still a chance that they didn't play, like, a good card, like, they're not, there's still a chance they're not ahead on board, yes, you're getting the MS Orcs too, which is nice, it's nice, that's a good thing obviously good i don't think it's as good as it reads um this this card more than any of the other amass cards is much more likely to be amassing onto something than it is like creating a token i just i'm i'm not i'm not uh i'm not interested in this card i i could totally see it being good um just four mana for this effect is just so bad compared to like three mana and like I know the one in War of the Spark was good, whatever people people have said, but I, I just, I, it's four is so, it's like, it's, it's half as good as three mana, because you just, your opponent has had so much more time to play cards that they want to get out of their hand than when it was, than if it's three mana, and like make a one one. I don't, I just don't, I'm just not there. Troll of Kazadum. 
Five and a black for six five. It can't be blocked by except by three or more creatures. And Swamp Plants and Cycling One. Yeah, I like this card. It's solid. I think it's a good good cycler. I don't think it's as good as the white one, obviously. Um, I don't think it's as good as the green one either, but it's uh, still good. I think these, these cyclers are much better than the last set of cyclers because they cycle for one. This one is a relevant body. Obviously, it's maybe a little expensive and a little, like, tough to, to... Like, does it ever get to attack? Probably no, but if it did, it would be kind of nice. <laughs> um, like, usually they say, like, two or more creatures. Three or more creatures is, like, that's that's a lot. You know, it's very close to saying unblockable on the card, which is not, not bad. I actually do kind of like this card. Urukai Berserker. Two to black for a 3 2 when it enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. Simple, simple card. I think you're going to want this type of effect. Um, it's attached to a 3 2 body. You've seen this type of card for card be solid in previous formats, and I I, uh, uh, I see this being solid here. Like, it just is like a little bit of value on your. Um, on your. Uh, there's three drop that is accepted that can trade with stuff like it like it being a ring bearer isn't obviously fantastic because it's a three two but like whatever i think it's fine like it's still not bad so voracious fell beast four black black for a four four flyer when it enters the battlefield each opponent sacrifices a creature create a food token for each creature sacrifice this way so, I mean, like, yeah, or whatever, like, you make them sacrifice a guy. There's tons of, like, small stuff in this format, though. Like, there's just tons of, like, small creatures that don't matter that your opponent can just sacrifice and be like, yep, fine, whatever. It's six mana, four, four flyer. I, like, a six mana, four, like, this probably is, like, a little bit better than I'm giving it credit for, but, like, again, in the set just being, like, a worse, lower power set, like, this card is probably just better than, like, I'm willing to, to give it credit for at the moment. Um, it's just so exp like it's just so expensive. Like again, I'm treating this like a modern limited set. It's, it may not be like like a, uh, a new new modern one. Like it's just it's, it's so tough to be um, asking this of you. And this is the last card. Witch King of Angmar, three black black for a five three flyer. When one or more combat creatures deal combat damage to you. Each opponent sacrifices a creature that was dealt combat damage to you this turn. The ring tempts you. You can discard a card, and it scans indestructible, and tap it. Yeah, this card's just busted. You basically can't race it, because you're just going to lose all your creatures, and you also can't kill this, because it has, like, indestructible from your opponent, and it just is extremely difficult to deal with, unless you have exile removal, or, like, blue tap removal or something, I don't know. That's it. That's it for black. I don't know. There's some good cards in here. Um, black has a lot of good uncommons. For sure. Uh, I think black's commons are kind of whatever, but I think the, the uncommons are really strong. Um, especially the removal. So, be advised about that. And uh, that's it for this, for this uh, video. So, if you enjoyed the preview, that's great. Hopefully there was anything at all enlightening within the preview. Um, if you were enlightened and you want to see more of the previews, there will be up on the channel, theoretically. So, see you.